first deal with designing even this uh, satellite and the engineering that comes behind it, mm -hmm. then once you get up there, because the conditions up there are very, very grueling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're riding um, Falcon, is it? <laughs> no, Falcon 9 was the other one that was launched. This is 13, isn't it? Yes, yes. Yes, I think it's the, this one is 13 <laughs> that we're riding yes. uh, in, in a couple of, of days' time. Yes. Uh, so, so, yeah, that. But then uh, once we do have uh, a satellite orbiting uh, a space, in terms of uh, you alluded to some regulatory uh, or, or global re regulations that uh, perhaps uh, come into play before you throw something out, uh, out there, mm. Th then what does that entail? We will have a, a satellite orbiting uh, space, but what else do we need to... Uh, consciously or continuously uh, be participating in in terms of regulation and uh, global um, policies and stuff. Yeah. yeah. So I think the first thing we need to think about is that Botswana doesn't have a space agency. Yakabo NASA, for example. Mm -hmm. So for us to even be able to launch Horahor, we have to sit down and consult with these space agencies mm -hmm. to know what kind of regulations are needed to take uh, a satellite, especially uh, the one li like ours, which is a glorified camera because mm. Yaruna, it, it's mm. going to be taking yeah. images or one spectral yeah. images from space. So yeah. we have to really sit down and talk with the people that have more experience to see, okay, what regulations are, are around this? What policies are around this? Do we adhere to those things? Because mm. we had to design this uh, um, satellite ourselves. Obviously, Irunale, a partnership with uh, Endurosat. Yeah. yeah. So again, these are some of the things when we're doing, we have to really consult because we're a small player. This is our first time. So some sort of after this, as Botswana, we're going to have to build our own space agency that yet that's specializing in just you know uh, space exploration. Right. Mm. Okay. Well, yes, our, our hyperspectral <laughs> payload cam <laughs> camera. Yes. We expect to get what from it. I mean, you're, you're orbiting Earth. I understand. I don't know how many times a day it, w when I read up on this, mm -hmm. it is what is expected to be ha uh, happening. Mm -hmm. So th this glorified uh, <laughs> camera, the hyperspectral payload uh, camera mm -hmm. what imaging uh, or what intelligence uh, on are we expecting uh, to to be receiving from this okay so like i was saying before it's mm -hmm. a glorified camera in yeah. a sense you're it's not the same as your optical camera or mm -hmm. you know what it does is it takes uh, pictures at multiple different wavelengths mm -hmm. so so essentially the soil content and the layer of the land where like minerals dense you know the honorable city planning around that we can mm -hmm. do so, something like poor precision farming mm -hmm. so the farmers can now use data yeah. about us about our land mm -hmm. and say well you know what if we're gonna build bigger farms we can go this way and for example Malabo when we had the floods better city planning comes mm -hmm. with having this sort of data knowing mm -hmm. what the land in drainage in Yang and where best to build our roads and the you know the infrastructure basically okay mm. interesting uh, so th this is a, a, a a type, a type of a type. satellite uh, yes, uh, that yes. we have. Uh, what software the, is uh, highlighted there? <laughs> okay, Even so if the I won't understand, <laughs> but yeah. what is it? <laughs> So the uh, so the software that we have, Kielungor, it's built by Endurostat, right? right. It, it's one that helps us control stuff like uh, power, because kind of the, the main source of this thing is running on solar. Mm. So we have to know wh where the battery is, because it's going to be there for about 15 years. That's mm. the average. Right? One. So also propulsion, where Halora goes off orbit a little bit, we can bring it back, mm. the, the images and the precision that we want. Okay. Yeah. So then the Vice Chancellor of Abuse the other day was talking about how perhaps uh, we owe it to ourselves as mm -hmm. ordinary citizens uh, to just inform ourselves a visit uh, at the ground station which is uh, at, at, Abuse. at Abuse. Yes. So when the ground station was launched, I think it was 2022 mm -hmm. yes. when it was launched, what was also mentioned is the fact that this could also uh, somehow relate to the 8,000 whatever plus other <laughs> satellites that are up there. Could we also benefit uh, from other satellite orbiting um, or, or orbiting space? Yeah, I mean, I, I want to talk about the ground station now, yeah. from the satellite now to the ground station. What uh, value do, do we do we have potential to uh, to earn from that? Okay, again, this is a very collaborative effort. Mm -hmm. one. So, when we really have to think about the the benefit we're getting is that we have these uh, collaborations Libo and Duracet to help us one first of all get a sense of how all of this works yeah right because yeah. Uh, Honana, this is uncharted territory for everyone yeah right. uh, apparently a whole team went from yes, yes, to, yes, to yes, sit yes. with Duracet yeah yeah so that, that they can get <laughs> 
I'm sure, you know, yeah. because Ghana some sort of transfer these skills, right. right? It's one thing for us to dream about doing it, and it's another thing for, for us to actually have the skill set. So yeah. again, when we're when we're building this uh, satellite and also communicating with other satellites, or one, let's say all those sort of things. That is what I wondered when I heard <laughs> yeah. that eight thousand orbiting space yes. traffic control. <laughs> it's busy up there. Yeah. It's busy. There's a lot of debris up there. So these uh, are see these are the things that you know we're concerned about when you're launching these satellites. Yeah. So even for 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 players that have been in there for decades now, they kind of help us to know how best to deal with difficult circumstances yeah yeah okay uh, when you mentioned that there is also a lot of de debris happening up, out mm. there in spaces the first uh, the fact that I remember during this journey somewhere there was a talk of uh, is it is it a clean room or a clean yes right yes, yes, and yes. that that uh, sounded to the ordinary citizen like myself that this is an environmental consideration or what is this uh, uh, about <laughs> <laughs> what is happening here so th this clean room is basically yeah. meant for who constructed this um, this satellite without and any interference so it has to be very clean mm. more clean than this room right? oh yeah no dust no particles no nothing because again if anything goes into that uh, for example even the lens i think the imagery can compromise like the quality of the data that we're getting mm. or one and can even compromise the the structural integrity of the the other satellite itself mm. you know so again these are things that don't worry we are not there yet in terms of uh, infrastructure mm. but these are things that don't worry, these partnerships help us you know to get over yeah yeah uh, so then uh, with this very sophisticated uh, level of intelligence and data uh, you know on, on grounds and soils and whatever that <laughs> our, our uh, hyperspectral camera will be pr providing us uh, do we have the capacity then uh, to to manage uh, to manage the, the, the or process uh, uh, this data even storage of, of this data what do we have on the ground what or what do we require on the ground uh, to have the, that would uh, take optimal use or, or take take up optimal advantage of having this investment Okay, um, I think to be really honest, they, we still have a long way to go with yeah. building more ground stations. Hwanana, we have the capacity to just operate this one satellite and store the, the information that we have. But if we want to launch Bobot set 2, 3, 4, 5 and mm -hmm. get more data, then obviously this is a, an initiative we'd have to take up and partner with the government on to see what, how much we would actually need to get mm -hmm. more data because again, Data is the new goal. You know? Where do you store space data? What does it even <laughs> look like? Is, is what I'm wondering. Because you know, how, one thing we've been uh, criticised uh, uh, for uh, as a society, as Botswana, is um, our lack of um, optimally using or even optimally having information and uh, data. How that Google type thing. Exactly. So when it comes to the next level, which is space data, is what you wonder what it then. Uh, th how how ready are we to to navigate these grounds or, or to optimize these uh, data the grounds? Mm. Okay, yeah. so we have sufficient um, infrastructure for this again this one satellite that we have. Oh, you okay. Know, you know, but if we were to think about anything else like about communication, uh, thinking about their personal data, it's about to, that's a different conversation altogether mm -hmm. because that requires data farms, you know, acres and acres of lands and over it would take billions of pullers. I mean, even for example, this rocket, if you wanted to launch it here, Mobile Zone would take us approximately 40 billion pula. Uh. So, you know, this is a, an endeavor that's, that has to be built upon time. You yeah. Know? Yeah. But what do we have to our advantage? Because uh, when the project started, when the mm -hmm. journey started, uh, our ambition, which was uh, pronounced, was that, uh, oh, you're, well, we, d we have ambition of being a space hub for, <laughs> for the region. But then yeah. we have neighbors that have gone ahead um, uh, of us yes. in launching their yeah. first satellite in Zimbabwe, I think, yes. <laughs> that have gone ahead and um, launched their first uh, satellite. So one wonders then what do we have to our advantage uh, to uh, play as a leader in the space of space <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well I think timing is everything yeah. you know I, I think right now yes we have other other nations in Africa that have you know launched their own rockets but we have proprietary information about us Botswana you know mm -hmm. that's the one thing that we keep forgetting or this is information that is our own this is information you know we can sell to other countries as well yeah. you know when we want to bring in like foreign investors when we want to grow our economy this is the kind of thing that 
helps us get there. Absolutely. As yeah. an international player, this bit of... Uh, uh, the, the international world belongs to us. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> and it's full total. So I want to talk about um, also uh, beyond just uh, getting uh, this full benefit of uh, uh, the, this information that we'll be getting uh, from the, this imagery is also the, an opening a, another area of skills, mm. opening uh, a, another area of uh, potential technological advancement yes. for Botswana uh, generally. Mm. I want you to speak to that so that uh, perhaps... Uh, even Buse to can, can uh, appreciate that they have actually unlocked this mm -hmm. opportunity uh, of, for the nation. What, the, uh, what opportunity li lies therein in terms of developing? Yes. Mm. Okay, so like I spoke uh, to earlier, precision farming is one of those things. Mm. And then also um, city planning is one of those things, mm -hmm. you know. And then the other thing, we're, in, we're into mining. So again, we, we'll be able to, to test, you know, the health of the soil, mineral, uh, uh, density and seeing where what are the next potential mine can come from, you know. Mm. Even if we're just not even mining diamonds, other minerals as well, it's on the yeah. soil. So it, 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 it opens up an area where we can just survey our own land and take a good look at what we have available to us. Mm. That's different jobs in different industries, you know, different specializations, even Honana with aeronautics, you know. We have children now who can now aspire to say, "What well, I want to work in space, you yeah. know. I want to yeah. work in in, uh, in trying to, you know, understand how satellites are being built." Because I want an engineer for just that sort of thing. Yeah. So yeah, it was it was Engineering Day just this week. Sometime was it last week? <laughs> so uh, when when we're looking at this opportunity, I wonder uh, uh, what uh, benefit did we get out of uh, perhaps the partnership uh, uh, with the uh, Enduro Start mm. in terms of skills. Are we coming out of this uh, with just in Juro has done the work for us? <laughs> <laughs> or uh, no, can no, we uh, no. remain here and, man and maintain at least uh, mm -hmm. our own machine? Yes, we can, yeah. which is why the, the whole partnership was more of a skills transfer yeah. than having them, having them come to run this thing for us. Mm. So as it is, when it uh, finally launches, we are maintaining and running this thing. Yeah. Yeah. It must be a very interesting um, area. The, the, when you talk about the democ democratizing space, yes, uh, what are the issues there? <laughs> well, today? I mean, to be really honest about it, mm. who owns space? You know, <laughs> this is this is uncharted territory for all of us. Lela la huiwa to the moon, kubeba wadi flag in Zimbabwe, America, right? Again, these are things that we have to be thinking about. How, what role do we play in that? in democratizing space, into yeah. making sure that everyone has access to whatever potential uh, resources can come out of that. Yeah. One of the satellite, Kwanana, it's stuff about uh, internet, then it's stuff about uh, home, uh, what do you call it, uh, navigation, right? Yeah, yeah. Again, these are services that we heavily rely on other countries for. And if we want to play in those fields, we have to, you know, essentially put our best foot forward and try. Yeah, well, yeah. We're, we're, what we're finding, at the, I suppose, this region Africa is uh, it, it has been, we have been on a bit of a back foot yes. in, in participating mm. in global economics. Uh, so uh, one wonders, uh, uh, then perhaps aren't, aren't we also going to be left in a bit of a back foot in participating in, uh, <laughs> <space> <laughs> in the space, uh, democracy space? Yeah. So, you, know? you know, I think this is a first, a good first step. Yeah. You know, in order for us to even participate, we need to take some step. Yeah. We can't just say, well, you know, we're going to wait Baracil. and wait. No, yeah. no, no, no. You no. <laughs> have to participate. And also, we kind of uh, get into the industry by taking a shortcut. They've already kind of done the work of failing a million times. We come into the space where we're getting all the valuable information. Mm -hmm. From their failures. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Then we're able to run with that. This is interesting. Yeah. In terms of uh, developing as uh, a nation towards that, um, I, I sit with a bit of uh, a, a bit of a c concern. I'll call it that. I yes. don't want to outright call it hurt. That um, we're sitting right now with uh, the, B the BGCSE results just just came out. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, so and you are looking at the top performing school having only attained. Uh, 34 uh, percent pass rate, mm. and you're uh, wondering. No, but, but we're coming to we're participating now, well, at least as a nation, yes. at uh, a very sophisticated levels of knowledge. Mm. <laughs> you know, we have set ourselves up to be a knowledge-based um, um, uh, economy, and we are starting to dabble in very Into sophisticated that, yes. levels of uh, uh, knowledge. And then the results on the ground, which is the future <laughs> of uh, <laughs> this nation. The country, yeah. 
what would you say though, maybe by way of advice or perhaps what, what, where our focus needs to be, when we realize that we're playing in very sophisticated uh, playing fields. Yeah. So we honestly cannot afford to have uh, the future that is going to be, you know, operationalizing this. Yes. Uh, perhaps not uh, they're looking so impressive. Well, I, I think the truth of the matter is we have to make these um, fields more attractive, to, more attractive. Yeah. To, to, to the youth. Because for a lot of them, it just seems like hard work. And maybe kiddos are, are nerds and people that like reading books. But again, look, the, the potential for us to play in this space and for us to come in at this time and a very serious footing solely depends on the youth. Yeah. And our interest in that, Absolutely. you know, we shouldn't just treat it as one of those things. You know, that's it. You have you if if you become technical, you could run your own company. Even if you're the business guy, you know, you can start looking at the potential. Okay, now we can dem we have our own information, right? Yeah. How can I play into that space? How can I we then sell this information? Or how can we create AI models and all these things that are fun to use? Because to be fair, to be really fair about it. We have no choice. We're moving into a space where information is gold. Absolutely. And we don't want to be left behind in the gold rush, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So startups and entrepreneurs out there, how do we take advantage of this opportunity that's, op that's opening up? Uh, because when you said that, I, I got thinking that, oh, yeah, perhaps then uh, uh, all those that have at least graduated, uh, uh, job seeking, or uh, are skilled in somehow, this is something that could open an opportunity uh, for business and otherwise uh, yeah. for them. How do we take advantage of this as ordinary citizens, as ordinary businesses? Okay, we need to think about it holistically. Yeah. It's not just about space, you know. Think about it from Motuel uh, is going to be a security guard. At, at that station, right? Think about somebody who's going to be cleaning at that station. Think about somebody who's going to be so, I think, uh, supplying food, you know? Yeah. You have to think about it from a holistic standpoint. To say, well, the more opportunities are there on the table as Botswana, the more opportunities we have to play even as small-time entrepreneurs, you know, yeah. SMEs, you know? And then we also have to think about uh, the, the larger corporations to say, well, look, we can then fund some of this research, you know? That yeah. valuable data is something that we can then own and sell off as well, you know? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of investment around just an area that has been untapped, especially for us in this country, you know? Mm. So, yeah. There's a lot. There truly is a lot. From It's just not about space, but yeah, there's a lot. All right, well, my director is telling me I have uh, exactly 10 seconds to end this discussion. Thank you so much <laughs> uh, for you. coming through, Mr. Yes, Mabu. Well. Okay, so I was coming from uh, Xavier, Africa, and uh, we were ex exploring the opportunity that is about uh, to open on, on Botswana. Botswana is set to launch uh, her first uh, satellite, Botsat 1, in a few days, uh, and His Excellency Advocate, uh, President Advocate Duduma Boko is there as the first citizen uh, to witness this. HIV is there's been a lot of uh, research that has gotten us to where we are in terms of being able to, to manage HIV AIDS. Uh, you can look at all these areas, it be diagnosis, it be virology, it be epidemiology. Vaccine development is still lagging behind, but there is a lot of effort still to